I have lost my baby boy. He was three. But I have three older ones that I'm pretty good with. Okay. When you say you well, lost him, you lost... He was lost killed by a drunk driver Christmas Eve of 2019. Oh, my God. He was I'm three years old. So sorry to hear that. So... Wow. So your son, three-year-old baby... Yeah. Was killed, killed by, by a drunk, drunk driver. driver. Oh. Christmas Eve of 2019, a driver came up on one way street. He had four DUIs. I straight into the truck. So, what's your name? Crystal. Crystal? Where are you from, Crystal? Down here. Alright. And, uh... You were born and raised down here? Yes, born and raised. Kip and Tusculum. Okay. Uh, you have children? Yes. How many kids? Four. How's your relationship with them? I've... Good, good. I've lost my baby boy. He was three. But I have three older ones that I'm pretty good with. Okay. When you say you lost him, you lost He was lost killed by a drunk driver Christmas Eve of 2019. Oh my God. He was I'm three years old. So sorry to hear that. So, wow. So your son, three-year-old baby. Yes. Was killed by a drunk driver oh. Christmas Eve of 2019. A driver came up a one-way street. He had four DUIs. I straight into the truck. That's you, how my foot got this way. Okay, so she's on a cane. Um, wow, so you've got, oh my God. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I'm a, I'm a father, I couldn't imagine that. And then a month later, because it was my husband, it was my second husband's son. Mm -hmm. My husband, my second husband waited 60 years to have a child, never had a child, that was his only one. And then when he was taken, my husband shot himself. Blew his brains out January 8th of 2020. Oh my God! So How? Less, so less than a month. You lost. I lost my son and my everything. husband, and then they foreclosed on my house three months later. And wow. And the ours down. Wow. Um. So, how? How was that dealing with with all that? I couldn't imagine just, you know, it's losing horrible. your it's child. And, then and I was clean at the time. I had ten years clean. 10 years clean and then drug me right back out here because I can't deal with it. My son's last words to me was, Mommy, Santa Claus coming tonight, I love you. Um, it's every day I deal with that. Every day. I, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. You no. Know, it's not easy. Did he pass away instantly or? Yeah, he was, was killed instantly. He was killed on impact. Oh my God. And. Yeah. Whatever happened to the oh, drunk yeah. driver? Oh, excuse my language. The asshole's in jail. He's got 17 years for manslaughter. But fourth DUI, it's all. He should have got life. But Yeah, absolutely. He's 55 years old, so you figure that is life for him. Yeah. You know, but it's What's still, his name? Do you know his name? Yeah. I'm not going to say it on camera. Yeah. Um, he is in state prison for it, though. That's, that's ridiculous. And uh, he had four DUIs. What are you doing on the road? You shouldn't even be out. And it was um, Christmas Eve of 2019. And what, you took an innocent baby. He was drunk that night. He left the scene. Yeah. Oh, so he didn't even stick around? Nope. How did they end up finding him? Because um, the car, the, everybody had a description of the car and everything. Okay. And Norristown's not that big. This happened so. in Bucks County. Oh, okay, okay. I lived in Norristown. My mother-in-law was, a li my mother-in-law lived in Bucks County. We took gotcha. my son there for Christmas dinner. Gotcha. Wow. Yep. So, oh my God, I, I couldn't even begin to imagine that. Oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, 
So you said that turned you, you know, that brought you back out into the streets essentially, right? Yep. Okay. And, um, oh my God, I, I just, I couldn't imagine this shit. It's hard. It's like when Kobe Bryant and his daughter was killed, she lose her husband. She lost her baby. Yeah, you knew what. I know what it's like to lose my. What they were dealing with. Right. And it's not easy at all. Every day I cry. Every day. And there hasn't been one day I've been straight since the deal. My birthday's coming up, and it was me and my husband, same day. We were born on the same day. And it's like. Everything's gonna keep coming, and I just I can't. Yeah, I you know, I bet. It's difficult. It's very difficult. What's your choice of drugs? Heroin and crack. Okay. And sometimes meth. Okay. And are you? So you living back down here in Kansas City? Yeah, I'm back out here. Okay. Are you on the street or? I'm on the streets. Okay. How long have you been back? Down uh, here. three months now. I've been back down here. Okay. I'm thinking about going in today to after four o'clock because I gotta meet my dad. And I'm thinking about going. And I can't do it another winter out here. After last, after my son and everybody, I can't do it another winter. I was out here last winter. Yeah, it was. It was I can't bad with my year. foot. I can't do it out here, you know, anymore. I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> yeah. I'll be 41 September 25th. You know. I don't. September 25th, my birthday is the 19th. Yeah, Happy my husband birthday. and I were born on the same day, just different years. Wow. So, can you can you walk me through what happened with the accident where you, you guys were walking someplace? We were walking. Me and my husband and my son had went to my mother-in-law's for dinner. Mm -hmm. We were coming up the right way. This guy was coming down the wrong way street with the lights off. My husband was driving, I was in the passenger seat, my baby boy was in the back. My son Jacob, oh, I remember him saying to me, he had the little red fire truck on across the lap that is my mom bought him. He goes, Mommy, say of course coming tonight. I said, yeah, buddy. He goes, I love you. And all I heard, boom! I hit the deck. I was out. I wake up in St. Mary's Medical Center to my husband and my sister crying. And I'm all masked and like, where's my son? And my husband's like staring at uncontrollably. He's like, Chris, Jake's not coming back. Killed him so badly on impact. Oh my god. I lost it. I completely lost it. And then less than a month later, intentions are arising between me and my husband because we're in the same house. We just lost our baby yeah. boy. And they say that's you know, very common. Yeah. We Parents both don't, that lose a child. We're both in not like the right state of yep. mind, so we're both like, yep. you know. And I said, my, he was a pagan. He was sergeant okay. of arms, and um, I had said to him, he had, me and him had a little argument, not major, you know, just a little fuss. Yeah. I said, I said, listen, I gotta get out of here. It's driving me crazy. Everywhere I look, it's Jake. Everywhere I see, I I gotta go. And when I left, he was on the couch, watching the game, and. He was drunk, and that's never him. We we own two roofing companies and everything. He was depressed. Yeah. He said to me, so that was always me and his saying, until the wheels fall off, I love you. And I left the house that day. He said that, he said, but they're falling off very shortly. I should have caught on. Something wasn't right. I should have caught on, and I didn't. I didn't. I come home from, uh, you know, calming down. I open my bathroom door, and he's, it's, scene I never want to imagine seeing again and for some reason I wish I would have just realized what he was saying that I or realized what he I'm mad he left me down here dealing with this on my own he took the coward way out you get angry with him yeah I'm very angry with yeah. him he took the, he took the, uh, the easiest way out yeah. not to deal with it yeah I need him too I needed him more than anything then. And he just gets up and does that. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think he meant to, I don't think he looked at it that way. But he was being very selfish. Because if anything, I felt like that every day. I carried that little boy. I bonded with that boy every day. 
No, every day I see something that reminds me of my son. Every day I sit there and I think of things that, and then my husband, everything too. It's like, I'm out of your eye every day. Just, right, so just numb it. Just numb it. And I'm afraid to deal with it. Queen, I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to go get straight and grieve because that's when it's all going to come out and hit me. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I know my, you know what I mean? I, I'm in recovery, but the first time I got high was a day after my mother was killed. So I, I understand that trying to hide and I didn't get clean until I started dealing with it. Right. I started going to counseling and dealing and it, and it sucked. It, and it, it was something I was so scared to deal with. It's going to hit. It's going to hurt yeah. so bad. And it's going to be like, I, I'm going to have to, it's, it's just something I got to do though, because I can't even go to Norris to help where they're buried because I have two felony warrants to see their, mm, their gotcha. graves. They know yeah, that yeah, yeah. if I go in Norris and they're going to lock me right to hell up. I'm yep. not even going to make their grave. I'm going to. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, so it's like, and they wouldn't want me down here getting high. They wouldn't want me down, you know. Of course. I mean, it's just my son's birthday is next month. Me and my husband's is this month. It's like, and the selfish part is, is that motherfucker sits in jail and gets to have another birthday, gets to talk to his kids, yep. just gets to breathe another air, just to hear his grandkids and his kids, I love you. Yep. Just, I don't. Yeah. I don't, I don't ever get to see my kid ever again. How selfish could you fucking be? I, I couldn't imagine that. Listen, that, that change, you know, when seeing and hearing those type of stories with children, you know, being killed by somebody drunk driving. And, you know, it's something that any of us that deal with addiction, we've drove when we should. Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, yeah. Um, but it makes us, like, when it happens, we remember looking yeah. forward. We're like, all right, I need to really be on my P's and Q's. Right. You know, like, because I don't, God forbid, if I was to do that to somebody, I don't know what I would do. And then you leave the scene, number yeah, one. That's... Number two, when they pull you over, you're drunk, you're drunk, and you have liquor and beer in your car. Yeah. Number three, number four, it's not your car, it's your parents' car. You have nothing, so now my lawyers are taking your parents and suing your parents for yeah. everything. Your mom's 86 years old, worked all her life for three, two businesses, and now she's going to lose everything because of yeah. you. Yeah, like, I and his mother turned around and said, You know what? In the courtroom, she turned around and she said, I, I disown you. I disown you because now you, I, I didn't raise you like this. Yeah, you ruined everybody. I life. hope you rot. I hope you realize how many lives you ruined. Not only did you ruin your life, but you ruined everybody's involved, yep. including that woman standing right there because now she doesn't have her real so, boy no more. Yeah. I hope you have to live with that every fucking day of your life. Wow. Every day of your life, his life. And you know, like my friend said yesterday, he's living with that. He's dealing with that, you know? Yeah, but that he's sort of don't make it any feel better right. to us. You know right, what I mean? he's starting to feel like that, you know, like, okay, my parents don't want nothing to do with yeah. me and this and that. I killed a baby. But that still doesn't mean, that still doesn't give it the right you still can talk to your kid. Yeah. You still do all that. I yeah. can't. You still have free will and a choice, even if you're in jail. Right. Wow. Um, I had 10 years clean. 10 years loved it. Never came right back out. Wow. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that, man. Um, I'm just, I'm lost. I'm lost without yeah. my, my best friend and my kid, you know, because that baby changed my life. <laughs> My oldest boy was 12. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't wanting another one. Yeah. You know? So, it's been a rough, it's been a rough journey for me. I'm a strong woman. Hell yeah, I would say. I tell you that, people tell me that all the time. You're very strong. I don't know how you do it, Crystal. Mm -hmm. They were like, we'd be insane. <laughs> we'd be nuts running. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't know how I do it. I, don't, I guess the strength from him and Jit, my husband and my son. Yeah. You know? Do you have any questions for me? No. Anything you'd like to ask? No. Um, I thank you for taking the time to speak with me and sharing your story. And I'm so sorry for your loss, man. I hope and, and pray that you're able to find peace, you know, some way, somehow. Um, I've had time clean before. 
you know, so you know how good that is. Yep. And uh, one thing I can say, just you know, I, I like I said, I lost my mother. It's nothing like losing a child. I could imagine, um, but it it feels better once you start dealing Talking with it. Talking and dealing. With yeah, it. but it's it's it's. So, I remember when people used to tell me that, I'd be like, man, get the fuck out of here. How is it gonna feel like? You know, but honestly, it it does. Um, well, somebody told me the other day, get over it. It's not it's not the end of the world. You know what I wanted to it's do not to that the end person? Of your world. Right. Yeah. You know what I wanted well, to do to that person? I said, now I'm going about to make it the end of your world. Yeah, I bet. You have no idea what I live with. Yep, yeah, I bet. I, I don't know what I would do, God forbid, if something happened to one of my children. You know, I have a, I have a two and a half year old daughter. Yeah. I, I don't know. I what wish I would do. every day I was a man because I would go to that fucking prison and kill him. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell everybody hold your kids tight. Tell them every day you love them because you never know when it's going to be the last time you can get to say that to them. You never know. Because there's always somebody in this world that's going to have something else on their mind. And who knows? You could take that little girl or that little boy from you and, and you. So at the end of the day, tell them how much you love them and enjoy every minute of it. And just because. I don't get that chance. Yeah. You know? And kids are precious. Kids are amazing. Yeah, they are. You know, at, two, at three years old, he was just... Just starting to develop his own yeah. personality. So, no, Mommy, I ain't doing that, Mommy, yeah. you know? And, yep. you know, I miss those voices in my... I miss yeah, those, of course. those days. So, like I said, hold her tightly. You know, don't... Because you never know. Somebody else out here could be yeah. fucked up and take her from you. And you're a big dude. You know, I think you would. Yeah. You know. So uh, thank, thank you. you for letting me. Uh, from you. talking to me and yeah. that. Give me one um, second. What's up, y'all? So as I'm putting this video together, I realize uh, just how fortunate I am. I know when I say this, and anybody that's been on the channel long enough has heard me say this, that the situations that we complain about, somebody else is dying for, right? Some, or somebody else is wishing for. Which I say, you know, we complain because our car is broken, but at least we have a car. There's somebody on foot that is dying for a chance to get a car, right? I listened to this story, and I realized that at times, I complain because I got to tuck my kids in, they're being a pain in the ass, they're misbehaving, whatever it might be, right? but at least I have them. At least they're alive to get on my nerves, right? Everybody isn't that fortunate. And we all know somebody who wishes they had their children back. This is a, a heart-wrenching story on so many different levels. So I, I think she said it best at the end of the interview where she said, you know, hug your kids and love them and tell them you love them because you never know and they're not gonna be there any longer. I say to say, give your kids a big hug and a kiss tonight and tell them you love them. And remember that the stuff we complain about, literally somebody else is dying for it. We complain because our car is, might be a gas hog, right? But at least we have the money to put in the gas tank. At least we have a car. I myself get caught up in that way too often, complaining and realizing that all the stuff I'm complaining about, you know, the majority of it, they're luxuries, right? They're not necessities that I need in my life. They're luxuries. And regardless if I work hard to get them or not, that's all irrelevant, right? It's just about being grateful for me. Knowing that the stuff that I complain about, somebody else is dying. I just wanted to chime in real quick, y'all, because this, this hit home for me. You know, I, I have young children. I lost my mother in a car accident. I couldn't imagine what this woman is going through. Say a prayer for Crystal, and uh, remember to be kind, loving, and patient, y'all. Have a great night. That's why I tell everybody, hold your kids tight. Tell them every day you love them, because you never know when it's going to be the last time you can get to say that to them. You never know. Because there's always somebody in this world that's going to have something else on their mind. And who knows? 
can take that little girl or that little boy from you and, and you. So at the end of the day, tell them how much you love them and enjoy every minute of it and just because I don't get that chance. Yeah.